today's chemical reactions, we're going to talk about hydrogen, the most abundant element in the universe. Today, we'll be investigating hydrogen. Hydrogen is the simplest element of all. Atom contains just one proton and one electron. But how can hydrogen be produced? Well, one way is to use hydrochloric acid and magnesium. Oh, wow. Boring. I'm now going to put in the hydrochloric acid. And now I'm going to add in a little bit of magnesium. And now I'm going to put my thumb over it. I'm collecting the hydrogen gas. And I'm now going to test for the hydrogen using a burning splint. Ooh, there's the distinctive <laughs> pop that tells us hydrogen gas is produced. All metals which are not too low in the reactivity series will react with acids to produce hydrogen. This is definitely the easiest way to make it in the lab. Here's the chemical formula. The positive magnesium ions join with the negative chlorine ions to make a salt, magnesium chloride. The hydrogen releases gas. Look, you can see the bubbles. Can anyone guess what salt would be formed if we used nitric acid with the magnesium instead? Anyone? Yeah? No? Yep, that's right! Magnesium nitrate! And we still get hydrogen gas produced! Next! Alright, keep your shirt on. Really reactive metals, like the alkali metals, you know, sodium, potassium and that type of thing, they'll produce hydrogen just by reacting with cold water. Let's have a look at that. So, another way to produce hydrogen is reacting sodium metal with water. Let's watch. Very much Oh, oh. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Sizzle. One way we can test for this is by lighting it with a splint. Oh. You hear that pop audience? Yeah. That is hydrogen, as you saw in our previous video. Splendid. Yep, that's definitely hydrogen. This time sodium and water react together to produce sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Sodium hydroxide is an alkali, hence the name alkali metals. See what they've done there? Clever, right? Eh? <sighs> this is boring. Try out potassium. Mm. We need potassium. This time we're going to be reacting with potassium with water to see what happens. It should be a little bit more interesting. Wait, what's up? Oh, don't the alkali metals are in group one of the periodic table. The further down the group you go, the more reactive the metals get. Potassium is below sodium in the group and is therefore more reactive with the water. The reaction here is sufficiently violent for the hydrogen to ignite in the air. Have we made this time? I don't know. I don't know. Really, we don't. We don't know. We're sciences. We, we don't need want to do to know. The next... Actually, we do want to know. What are the products of the reaction this time? Hmm? Any ideas? Yes, that's right. Potassium hydroxide plus hydrogen. You seem to forget, sir, that your experiments cost too many science geeks' lives. You need to start thinking about the future. More science geeks mean more experiments. More experiments mean more money. More money means more, uh, more experimental equipment. What? And we can have more science geeks to kill. But sadly, your little pocket full of money just doesn't... More! That reminds me. I Who cares? Hydrogen has plenty of uses. Oh yeah. The universe is made up of vast clouds of hydrogen. You can see it glowing red in this picture. Stars are mainly made from hydrogen. All the stars in the universe use hydrogen as their fuel for fusion. This provides all the light and heat for life on Earth. Hydrogen is also used, along with nitrogen, to make ammonia for fertilizer. Many types of food contain hydrogenated fat. This can clog up your arteries, so be careful. Due to its low density and relative cheapness, hydrogen is still used in unmanned scientific research and also weather balloons. Hydrogen is also present in all acids. No, really, I mean hydrogen. Who cares? You should. Hydrogen is dangerous. The reason why it's not used in man balloons or airships any longer is due to this: the 1937 Hindenburg disaster. Out of the windows to watch a roar and a burst of flame near the big tail fins turned the ship into a flaming inferno. Tragically, 35 people died, but amazingly, 63 people were rescued and survived. 
You see, hydrogen and oxygen make quite an explosive combination. Its explosive nature actually makes hydrogen very useful. It's used as a fuel for rockets to get them into space. For a bit of a giggle, we decided to make our own hydrogen powered rockets. For the best explosive results, you need a ratio of two parts hydrogen to one part oxygen. Hmm, not sure we'll be going into space just yet with these particular rockets. Here's one we prepared earlier. Did you notice that when hydrogen burns in air, no carbon dioxide is produced? This means it doesn't contribute to global warming. Unfortunately, to mass produce hydrogen, you either do it by passing electricity through water or reacting a hydrocarbon with steam, so therefore fossil fuels are still required. Man. <laughs> Hydrogen is the simplest and most abundant element in the universe. It's made of one proton and one electron. Hydrogen can be produced in a variety of ways. It also has many, many uses. But don't forget, it can be very dangerous and needs to be handled with care. Oh, and don't forget the squeaky pop test. You made that catapult balisca shoot for miles. Now! What are you talking about? A catapult mollusca what? is something that launches... It's an experiment! Yeah, it smacks and shoots fire straight out of the exhaust no. pipe. What? You don't really know these experiments, do you?